Gracious and loving God, may only your words be spoken. May only your words be heard. Amen. Please be seated. Before I begin my words this morning, I want you all to promise me that when people come in the church in about a half an hour, you're going to be very nice to them because they forgot to set their clocks ahead. Okay, we're going to all pretend like we're just starting. Two years ago this weekend was our first Sunday gathering in the New Wilderness that was Zoom Church. At the time, we didn't have the technology, we didn't have the experience, we didn't have a clue what we were doing. We had never heard of such a thing as tech verger. At the time, we thought we were engaging in a temporary exercise that would surely be over by Easter. About two months into this experiment of church and school and work online, George Floyd was killed in the streets of Minneapolis and the great racial, racial reckoning of 2020 began. We have ridden the waves of lessening restrictions only to watch the numbers climb again and restrictions tighten again. And now there is yet another war. This time it is in Europe. This time with consequences that are far reaching for the entire planet and not just what we are paying at the gas pump. And still we gather. Mm. And still, we sing to the shepherd of our souls. And still, we raise support for the indigenous women and children of Guatemala. And still, we explore our longings for a more just world at Adult Ed and Friday Lenten House Church. And still, we teach our children of God's love for them in Sunday school. And still we break bread and gather at this table to be nourished by the one who was love incarnate. It has been, I think we can all agree, a very long two years. And still we are not done. We are doing our very best to stay on the path, to keep our way toward bringing about the vision of God's beloved children living together here on earth as it is in heaven. None of that is to say, of course, that each of us have not had our moments when we haven't been tempted to raise the flag of our surrender and give in to the whispers of complacency, the status quo, or nostalgia. How much easier might it be to disengage from the hard work of loving one another as God loves us, and just focus on me for the time being. I don't know about you, but I have had a recurring fantasy these past two years of moving to a cabin somewhere far, far away from the tensions of the world, somewhere high enough in elevation to be able to ignore the rising sea levels, somewhere without obligation to anyone or anything but just me, maybe my family. I've told colleagues about my desire to open up a small store that sells unscented candles that no one would shop in. <laughs> Just something to keep me busy moving things around and maybe some light dusting, but no angry customer interactions. Now, of course, 
Any of you who know me even the slightest bit, you laugh at my fantasies of solitude, knowing I would last maybe 24 hours in any of my dream scenarios. But it sure is nice to think about sometimes. It's been an exhausting, spiritually and emotionally draining two years, and the world shows no sign of giving itself over to God's dream for it anytime soon. So the work continues, and the temptations to flee the work, they continue too. Things are starting to heat up and get complicated for Jesus in today's reading from Luke's Gospel. The Pharisees, who are Luke's favorite foil for Jesus and his ministry, they sense an opportunity to test Jesus' commitment to his work and to his plan to continue toward the events that await him, should he stay on the path he has set himself on. And there's a bit of a trick question for Jesus behind the Pharisees' mask of concern for his well-being. Get out of here, Jesus, the Pharisees say. Herod wants to kill you. Well, we know from elsewhere in Luke that Herod probably doesn't want to kill Jesus. He's talked to him before. And he won't kill Jesus in just a few chapters when Jesus is brought in front of him. Herod doesn't want Jesus dead, Luke tells his readers. The authorities of the day, the mouthpieces of the status quo, complacency, and nostalgia, they want Jesus gone. Leave, though. And Jesus abandons not only his work and ministry, but he abandons any claim to being a prophet in the long line of prophets, aiming to disrupt the power struggles to bring about God's peace, which is a peace born only of justice and love. Stay, and his fate is all but sealed. When this confrontation between the Pharisees and Jesus happened, it had been an exhausting three years since Jesus was baptized and began his public ministry. Perhaps he too had fantasies of escaping off to a small town in the desert, just carving wood and sleeping really well. But Jesus is not deterred. In this moment, Jesus sees that the work he is about will not end with all of humanity gathered under his arms like a hen's brood under her wings. But with that brood continuing to choose fear over love, power over justice, conflict and destruction over peace. But still, he continues. It may seem to many of you redundant, or even a bit of gluttony for punishment, that we still, given all that is going on in the world, we still engage in the practice of a Holy Lent. Is it the world itself Lenty enough already? Why invite in confession and repentance? Why lift up images of barren desert and the cross? Why sing 40 days and 40 nights and not we need a little Christmas? Barbara Brown Taylor writes about the early church's need to create a Lenten season beautifully, I think. Quote, when the world did not end as Jesus himself said it would, his followers stopped expecting so much from God or from themselves. They hung a wooden cross on the wall and settled back into their more or less comfortable routines, remembering their once passionate devotion to God, 
the way they remembered the other enthusiasms of their youth. She continues, Little by little, Christians became devoted to their comforts instead. The soft couch, the flannel sheets, the leg of lamb roasted with rosemary. These things made them feel safe and cared for, if not by God, then by themselves. They decided there was no contradiction between being comfortable and being Christian. And before long, it was very hard to pick them out from the population at large. They no longer distinguished themselves by their bold love for one another. They did not get arrested for championing the poor. They blended in. They avoided extremes. They decided to be nice instead of holy. And God moaned out loud. They decided there was no contradiction between being comfortable and being Christian. They decided to be nice instead of holy. And God moaned out loud. Lent is a season of repentance. It is a season of forgiveness. It is a season of God's boundless love for us. And I'm not sure what else will change this world we live in but repentance and forgiveness and love. In the words of presiding Bishop Michael Curry, how else will we transform this world from the nightmare it often is into the dream God intends for it to be? It is tempting, I know, when the world shows no sign of giving us a break to give up and give in. It is tempting to trade, I must be on my way, in the words of Jesus, for if you can't beat them, join them. It is tempting to trade nice for holy or comfortable for following in the footsteps of Jesus. Jesus answers the temptation to veer off course, stating, I must be on my way. We must be on our way. We must stay on the way. We must hold fast to God's way if we have any hope of changing this world at all. And we know, and there have always been those who have known, that the way of God is the way of love. And the way of love can be a terribly difficult road to walk. So we do not walk that road alone, but with each other. And we will sing while we walk. And we will create art while we walk. We will read good books and take long naps while we walk. We will laugh and we will cry, we will rejoice and we will lament, and we will walk. And we will love while we walk on the way we must be on. My friends, we must keep walking on our way until we can look up and find ourselves surrounded only by the fulfillment of God's dream for this world on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.